Hello guys and welcome to another video after quite some time. Um, since I got my hands on my new RDX4090 card, I was like, okay, maybe I want to upload a new overclocking tutorial and how to do it fast and simple, really fast and simple, not an undervolting guide and really overclocking guide. I'm still the type of guy who wants to overclock and not undervolt and call it DA. I just made my card worse than from factory and this is what I call overclocking. <laughs> we, d we ain't gonna do this. Um, and the tools we need today is uh, the MSI Afterburner, which you can get for free in the interwebs. Make sure you get it from a trusted website, Guru3D, Tech Power Up, for instance, or GPUZ, as you can see, also from Tech Power Up. Really handy tool. And 3DMog. Yeah, 3DMog is the one which costs a bit but i must say um considering what you can do with this tool it's actually worth it and if you have an rdx 40 series card i think you can also get your hands on 3d mark you can find it on steam for instance so first things first install the msi afterburner after you install it you go into settings you set voltage regulation and voltage monitoring those two checkboxes hit apply and okay and then uh, it will reset and then you should have about the same screen as i have maybe a different design but all in all you will find all the options i have then once you start up gpuz it should basically look like this you go into the small three bars here enable the options and then you can say gpuz window always on top and then you can deselect the sensors you don't need because i think in stock form gpuz shit loads you with uh, tons of sensors and then you have a really handy and nice overview of the most important sensors from your graphics card but before we start the overclock i want to tell you that to make a fast and easy and simple overclock you need to know the basics so the pre-work is more important than the actual work this the fundamental basic is your personal limits and with personal limits i mean for instance your fan speed what what is your maximum fan speed you really want to rape your ear with, ears with for instance if you have a not water cool card you have a air, an air cool card and you say everything beyond 80 percent rapes my ears so if you have a fan speed value or from your cooling a pump noise level or anything you might want to set it now to the maximum value you find is okay for your ears after you set your fan speed values then you grab your core voltage slider put it to 100 percent we are use make use of 3d mark and select the benchmark we want to run in my personal opinion the speedway is the most sensitive sensitive one to core and to uh, memory overclock I just tested this in the last recording I did for you. So this is basically the fourth take or so and I want to have this as the last one because I really want to do it again. So we use this benchmark, we go to customize settings, we enable looping and disable full screen. And then we are running the customized test. So once we are in the benchmark, you check your firmness and how they do. So we are not ready for overclocking yet. Now comes the set pre-work in order to have, an, have a stable and reliable overclock in the end. And the pre-work is basically now checking your firmness, how they do, do they increase, how much do they increase, where are they? So you should, you should Put your eye on the hotspot and the gpu temperature as well on the memory temperature let's say you are watching your temperatures and you're coming close to 80 degrees or 90 degrees on the hotspot 90 degrees most likely or your gpu temperature raises 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 and it really doesn't want to come down the same goes for your memory temperature what you have in this particular case is called thermal runaway which means your fan speed your pump speed everything is under what you need to be able to cool this amount of heat the first thing you aim for is a stable temperature in order to do this we 
click on the curve editor we open up the curve editor and we can see with the cross our card is running at 1.1 watts at yeah just above 280 gigahertz or in the middle of 280 gigahertz so in my case we assume we pretend i have a air cooled card just like one of you basically and at 60% fan speed I can maximum do 350 watts I mean you have to basically find out what your card can cool in this particular case in the long run so but we just pretend it's 350 watts so what are you gonna do to lower the power draw is you press and hold the shift knob on your keyboard then left click with your mouse and then just drag and drop let's say 1075 you mark you mark all this all those points to the right then you just click and press and hold on one of those points it doesn't really matter and you, then you pull it the highest point below the last not marked point then you hit apply if you double click you can deselect your selection you just did as you can see we lowered it by 20 watts this is not enough so we go to 125 lowering accept apply and we can see we are at 350 now one would say this is great we have 350 watts this is our target but actually not we don't want to have this and the reason you will see is later we want to get 10 percent below this which means 10 percent from 350 is like 315 so i want to lower it I will lower it another one, another 25 milliwatts. And we can see 330, 3 now, nah, a bit, bit more. Let's say 3975. Yeah, and there we have it. 320, 315, about there. So now we are under my our under thermal runaway limit, which is fine. And now we work from there. What we're gonna do here is once we see the temperatures have settled in, we are not having any form of runaway whatsoever. We press and hold the Alt key on the keyboard. Click any point to the left, which we didn't alter. And offset it by at least 100. This is for free. This, this can every card. We can see we increase the core clock at, at about 100 megahertz then we see it's still stable and from here we add 20 megahertz every 10 seconds till it crashes so we go to 120 160 180 200 so i never I will, I will call it a day here because I know for a fact this card crashes at about 250. 250 is the limit. So let's let's say your card crashed as well as at 250 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Every card is different. Some won't won't go as high and some have a different voltage curve. So it doesn't really matter. So if your card is like mine and you let's say you crashed at 250 like i did or the 260 you back off 10 uh, 50 megahertz so this would give us 200 megahertz plus 200 like in my case and you basically overclocked your core to be 100 percent sure this is stable you're gonna run this benchmark for like 10 minutes 10 50 minutes this is about the level where you should run it now don't overclock things simultaneously because you will not find what causes caused the crash so we can see the power draw increased to yeah let's say 331 in peak so you can see we are getting closer to the 350 watts limit i just said so and now we work from here so once you have done your 50 minutes loop in order to make sure your card is stable we are focusing now on the memory clocks so 500 is on every card basically for free you can add it and it will run and from there we add 250 megahertz every 
10 seconds like we do in the core. So 750, 1000, 1250, 15, 1 5. So, and I know for a fact if I enter now 1750, my card will crash. I don't want to do this crash now and, uh, and lose my footage. I hope you understand it. Like I said, I'm on the fourth take. If this card crashes and I, lo I, lose, I lose my take, um, you won't see this video. And if you see this video, you will know it if you see it or not. And in this particular case, on the memory, I found out about 400 megahertz is the least amount you want to back off to be sure it's stable. So if you have 1750, back it off to 1350. And as you can see, we are really close to the 350, but we are not crossing it, which is really good. So this is basically your overclock. You have now successfully overclocked really fast your RTX 40 series card to the maximum possible value of your cooling or voltage or power or whatever your own limitations. Now we can es enter escape. Once you set all your curves and everything, you how you want to have it, you can click on this save symbol down in the middle, save it to profile 2 in my case. Then you go into then you can go into the settings, start with Windows, start minimize, then you go to profiles on the top and then you put it into the 3D and 2D proof profile. This way if your card if, if your PC boots up, it will start automatic, automatically the MSI of the burner and select and apply the overclocking profile you just did. The first question probably in your mind is why don't we work with the power limit if we know we have 350 watts and why don't I just set the power limit to 350 watts if we just want to do 350 watts. The reason behind this is simple. I mean, you still can do it for sure. There's nothing wrong with it. But in terms of the overclocking, how we come to this point, it's important because now we have at this point 200 megahertz. And if we, if you do like 75%, which maybe is 350, I don't do the maths and Instead of a curve, you apply an offset of 200 because it would be the same. So now our, this card will pull 350 watts and we know we are two, plus 200. It is. But now comes the, the issue with that. If you go now into the curve editor, we can see we are allowing the card still to go up to 1.1 volts, which is, be, depending on the workload, possible, easy possible. And you can see it's reaching 3045 megahertz. Getting your card over or close to 3 or 3.1 gigahertz requires a really, really good card and a really, really good cooling. And most of the cards won't be able to do this. And in 2D applications or super light load applications, your card will boost up without drawing in this case 350 watts and because it boosts up to this clock it will apply those clocks to the core and it will crash and there you have it the overclock is not stable that's why we do it this way that we kept the whole curve at basically the maximum power draw we know it should be able to do with this voltage and frequency we allow or overclock the card to do and if you have light load or any other load the card will basically be stuck here it won't go past in our case 2.8 gigahertz and we know it's stable because it won't go higher than this there are many cards out there which can't clock this high and another thing is the more you go to the left of this curve the more offset you can apply and the opposite happens the more you go right to the curve. So <clears throat> if we reset the curve, it's possible that we have here 200, as we know. It may be possible that we can add here 250 
but if you go to this point of the curve it's I know for a fact the card when it's in this area here can maximum do 120 so the offset overclock you can apply is not mm, it's, it's not linear it's progressive so you more the, the more you move up in the voltage the le the less you can actually overclock or offset the voltage curve this that's another reason and since we are grabbing and holding the whole curve like this because everything else is just a pain to manually set the curve you set the middle part to 200 in our case but this is way too much for the upper part I hope this uh, answered the question why we don't work with the power limit and why it doesn't really make sense to work with it. I mean, once you set your clocks how you want to have them, you can now set the power limit to 350 watts. There's nothing wrong with it. But for the overclocking process itself, it was important to not do this in order to get a stable clock and a stable full load without interfering uh, power limits. I hope you found this guy is pretty much comprehensive and it was easy to follow and i hope i also didn't forget any important aspect of the video which you need i think i covered most of the information and stuff you need to be able to overclock your card successfully and very fast i would appreciate a thumbs up or a like or a comment really much so yeah i hope i see you in the next one and bye bye